The photoelectric effect is the process whereby electrons are ejected from a metal surface when light of suitable frequency is incident on that surface. So we remember that a metal is a substance where all the nuclei are bound together and the electrons are free to move around in what is called a sea of delocalized electrons which essentially says those electrons are free to move anywhere on that surface but they would need a certain amount of energy to escape that surface. So until this point we have viewed light as a wave. A wave in the sense of it is able to interfere with itself. We have done a number of experiments in optics in which we showed how light creates an interference pattern. Now what that would suggest is that if a light is shone on a surface for long enough, every single electron would be able to absorb enough energy to escape from the surface of that metal, which would mean that after a long enough period of time, all metals would be left without any electrons. Now, in reality, it's found that this is not the case. It's found that light does not behave like a wave because not all electrons will always be ejected from the surface of a metal. So the other way that we can look at light then is as a stream of particles. We have heard of the wave particle duality of light and what this says is that it suggests that instead of the light being a stream or a steady wave that comes out of the light source, what this is now seeing the light as is a stream of particles. We know that each of those particles contains a specific energy and that energy is a function of the frequency of that light. We remember that H is Planck's constant and so the energy of any one photon is determined by the product of Planck's constant and the frequency of that light source. Now the reason why this explanation is considered to be correct is because we know that each electron can only absorb a single photon of light. And if they can only absorb one photon of light, that then explains why the photoelectric effect only occurs at certain times or at certain frequencies. And that is because each metal has a specific amount of energy that is required to release or for an electron to escape. That amount of energy is known as the work function. It is essentially the product of Planck's constant and the threshold frequency for that specific metal. So what that tells us is that in order for an electron to escape this metal surface, the energy of the photon, the photon energy, would have to exceed or be greater than the work function for that metal. Now with this explanation, we find that it makes sense why not all light sources are able to create the photoelectric effect, and that is because they do not necessarily have light of a high enough frequency, and it also explains to us how we can determine how much or how many electrons are able to escape from the surface of that metal. Because there are now three possibilities for the amount of energy that a photon has. We know that if the photon energy is less than the work function for that metal, we know that there is not enough energy for an electron to absorb and escape that metal, so we say that there are no photoelectrons or the photoelectric effect does not occur. The second option is that if the energy of the photon is equal to the work function, then what that means is it's just enough energy for an electron to absorb and escape from the surface, but not enough energy for it to move away from the surface because it has no additional kinetic energy. And the third option is that the energy of the photon is now greater than the work function, which means that there would be a photoelectron, an electron that escapes, and then the excess energy, the difference between the amount of energy and the, of the photon and the work function, would then become the kinetic energy. And from this we can find the formula, which is our kinetic energy is equal to the energy of the photon minus the work function, this being the amount of energy required to escape, or we can rewrite that as the photon energy is equal to the sum of the work function and the kinetic energy, 
where we remember kinetic energy is half mass times the velocity squared. Note that this only applies when the energy of the photon exceeds the work function. And just a final note, we know that since the energy of a photon is determined or dependent on the frequency and we know that light always travels at a constant speed, what that tells us is that there is also a relationship between the energy and the wavelength, which is E is equal to HC over lambda. So often we would refer to the color of light where we know that color is dependent on the wavelength of that light.